Disruptors, I want to welcome you to the Close the Deal podcast. We've got a very special guest with us today. She is a master networker. She's going to walk us through the basic steps of networking and why that is so important. And these are fundamental steps. They're simple steps, but they make a huge difference. Um, she is a classically trained singer. I've heard her sing. I was shocked. Because when you see Angie, Angie Wydell is our guest. When you see Angie, she is a tiny lady with a tremendous voice. And she is going to, she, she will, I've seen her speak at networking events and she steals the show every time. Angie Wydell, I want to welcome you to Close the Deal. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So my first question, you're in Baton Rouge, based in Baton Rouge. Where? Where do you take somebody for lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever it is to close the deal? Easiest answer in the world. It doesn't matter if we're closing a deal or if I'm bringing in people from out of town. Parents. Pa, yes. What's your favorite? Yeah. Yes. Favorite place. Uh, gosh, the boudin balls, the raw oysters, the um, any of it. The Atchafalaya yeah. is good. The Vermilion's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. That's that's the great thing about Louisiana food. A Gupla restaurant. Yeah. So many it's, laid so back. it's laid back. It's chill. And every time I bring people, for, especially from out of town, they just, they mow it down. It's great. I love it. All right. Who or what are you grateful for that helped you get you where you are today? Uh, Okay. I got three who's and a big what. Okay. So my, my three who's are, uh, Jesus couldn't do Jack without him. Uh, my dad, um, my dad reinvented himself in his early fifties and became an entrepreneur and went from, um, you know, doing one thing, working for other people and then eventually went into his own business and he's had everything from feast to famine and everything in between and still makes it work. That's he's awesome. still working at, 70 something years old and he's fantastic. So, mm -hmm. um, he was the first person that actually said, I think you need to own your own business. Oh, I love it. The third who is my husband because he sees everything. And sometimes he kind of acts as my sales manager from time to time, but, uh, he's, he's just, he's fantastic. He's such belief in me and what I can do and so proud. And then my, what is my very oddly eclectic career. Mm -hmm. I've done everything from film and television to corporate sales to a uh, little bit of, you know, involved in the construction world, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And um, every good, bad and ugly experience that I've had, I don't have any regrets. I've, I've taken them all and they've all put me right square where I am today. Wow. Yeah. And, and I've seen you in action. I, 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 this is why we're talking right now because we were networking. Um, before we get to the name of your company and what you do, uh, what was the problem that you saw in the marketplace? Because you, you, you've exited. You are now have your own business, following your dad's footsteps. Mm -hmm. What was the problem that you saw, and then how are you helping people solve that problem? So I, I opened my, my company in 2020 and I, I was seeing the issue, especially, you know, COVID had hit. The phones were becoming a big thing. Everybody's attached to their phones. Um, I have lots of kids. They're young. Not a lot of face-to-face, -face, not a lot of understanding on how to handle face-to-face -face conversations. Uh, conflict negotiation, all of that stuff. Networking was a big one that I saw a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, especially the younger generation of salespeople mm -hmm. getting out, not really knowing how to read a room, how to, how to talk to people. And so I focused on interpersonal communications in the workplace. I focused on teaching people how to be the best versions of themselves and how to, you know, match the energy that they're looking at, that they're facing and, and be able to kind of handle it all. Cause we learn so differently now in this age of technology. And I also heard a lot of business owners being concerned about AI and, um, and that very thing. I heard a lot of people going, well, these people don't know how to connect. They don't know how to talk to people. How do I, how do I get people to my, my employees to get better at really 
diving into the customer's needs or, or being better even behind the scenes, you know, with coworkers. So my focus is interpersonal communications. All right. So we get to come back to, and I'll, I'll let you share the name of the business at the end and the, sh the name behind the story because okay. it, it buttons, it buttons everything up nicely. Okay. Now I've got these cards in my hand and okay. we're going to, we, I want to, I want to walk through the process that you walk. So folks, I walked into a networking meeting that Angie was part of my, fir my first meeting and they introduced her to walk people through the process of how to start networking if you've never been to a networking meeting and how important that is. So first talk about why people should be networking. And then we're going to go through these cards one by one. Uh, and I've got the cards from the meeting. I saved them and for this moment, and here we are. So I belong to uh, a networking organization called Go Engage, G-E-A-U-X, Engage, all, you know, very Louisiana. Um, and our... Our goal with this is resisting passivity. We want to help people to become better referral partners. And that's the whole purpose of networking is you got to be able to talk to people about what it is that you do. But you also have to kind of teach people how to refer you. And if you don't know how to explain what it is that you do in a very short period of time uh, while you've got their attention um, and you're not thinking about, okay, how do I capture their attention? How do I make sure that I'm connecting in the right way? And then also understanding all of those little peccadillos that you're going to bring out in those cards. Yep. How do you connect? How do you, how, how do you become real referral partners? Because, you know, there's networking and then there's not working. <laughs> and networking is when you're actually being productive and you're meeting people, you're having good one-to-ones and you're, you're actually making money, which a lot of people feel like is a bad word, but really that's why we go to networking events. If you're not working, you're just there making a bunch of friends. And it's not about getting our emotional and social needs met. It's about getting, you know, those deals, closing those deals, as you like to say, and making sure that that happens. And of course, a sale is not always going to be made in a networking meeting, but the goal is to get to those decision makers. The goal is to create a team so that you're not out there on an island by yourself just trying to create business for your company, whether you own it or you work for someone else. Okay. Now so let's go let's start this process. We in is okay. we got several cards here. The first step in this series is your character, your integrity, your sense of humor. Yeah. People must know your character your integrity and your sense of humor. And that's important because if we don't know each other and it, that's kind of based around the concept of know, like, and trust. People do business with people. They don't do business with brick and mortar. So in order for us to, to really hook into each other's business, I have to know who you are and are you going to do what you say you're going to do and sense of humor is real important because some people are really dry. And again, going back to that whole situation that I was talking about, you know, when you're focused on the phone, a lot of things get misread. And so it's, it's really important for us to get to know each other's, you know, personality, how we, how we laugh, what's funny. Because, you know, I'm loud. <laughs> I'm going to nah. scare somebody at some point. You know, I, I have a tendency to laugh a lot and smile a lot. And some people might go, whoa, that's a lot. But. You know, when people go to refer me, they're going to go, okay, look, she's little, but she might be a little bit loud. And that's okay. Don't be afraid. The, the words I use to describe you right after I met you were tiny and a pack of dynamite. All right. You are referrables, the second step. Yeah. People must know that you're referrable. And what that means is, do you have a service that you can offer to someone? Do you have products that are in the marketplace? If I am selling mostly B2C and I'm in a networking organization with a bunch of people that are B2B, well, then those people may have to go around a wide berth to just try and refer me or vice yeah. versa. I've been in situations where I've been the B2B person in a B2C type networking event and, and they could not, like I was not referable to them because they just, they, they couldn't turn to their neighbor and go, oh, by the way, have you met Angie? You know, yeah. it didn't work. So people have to know what it is that you do and if you are, in fact, referable. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. All right. The third one, 
Who do you want to serve? That's pretty important. Yeah. yeah so orders? this one, this one, a lot of people kind of are like, oh, that's no brainer. But really when it's, who do you want to serve? Cause there's another one in there that's kind of similar. But who do you want to serve? I think of that more as your, your, your demographics and your geographics. You know, this is my territory. Um, and I'm looking for businesses of this size, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of a broad reach. Mm -hmm. I want to serve, you know, people in the state of Louisiana. I'm looking for businesses from five to 50 employees. I'm looking for, you know, that kind of maybe, maybe even a, um, a title of, a, of an office that you're looking for, but really that's very broad. Who you want to serve is very broad. Two quick things. Number one. I knew I was going to have to have enough energy later in the afternoon to do this episode with Angie, to do our, have our conversation for this podcast. So I took my AG1 early this morning. It gives me the nutrients and the vitamins, everything I need in one quick scoop. They make it super easy. Visit closethedeal.com. There's a special offer on my page AG1 has for you where you're going to get five free travel packs and a year supply of D3 and K2. The second thing, real quick, my brand new book is out. This is the draft copy with this not for resale, but it is live on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon, a uh, special promotional offer right now on Amazon. Check it out. Uh, go to Amazon and look up your first franchise roadmap, your first franchise roadmap, or I'll have a link in the show notes uh, for this episode. Now, let's get back to the show. By the way, the show notes will be on closethedeal.com. Let's get back to the show. How do you recognize a good prospect for you? That's the other one that's kind of like that. So the how to recognize a good prospect is more specific. I'm looking for the CEO of XYZ company. Uh, that is a good prospect for me. A good prospect is very specific. Um, if you don't have a person's name, then you can say, I need the decision maker at this company and this department or whatever. For example, we were talking just recently, there's some industrial people that were talking about trying to get into BASF. BASF has like 13 different units. Well, what unit are you trying to get in? And are you looking for the purchasing guy? Are you looking for the operations guy? Are you look who are you looking for? Don't just say, oh, well, I'm looking to get into BASF. Well, that's that's, that's more of that who you want to serve. I want to serve BASF. I want to serve those plants. But what's a good, how to recognize a good prospect is somebody very, very specific. And the more specific you can be, the more likely you're going to get that referral. Somebody's going to know somebody, if not that guy, they're going to know somebody next to that guy in that department. Gotcha. All right. The next one. How do you talk about you to others? So how, how, I'm sorry, how to talk about you to others, sorry. right? How to talk about you to others. So, um, for example, if I am asking you, you will to refer me, then I'm going to tell you not only about my business, but I'm going to ask you, Hey, look, I want you to, um, tell them that. I might be a little bit loud. Give them some insight into my personality. Give mm -hmm. them some clues about how I am right. so they're not surprised. Mm -hmm. So I want you to sell me as a person because at the end of the day, they're going to buy me first before they mm -hmm. ever buy my product or my service. So we have to have a close enough relationship. And we got to know each other well enough that we can talk about that person. And that goes back to then you can speak to you can speak to who I want to serve. You can speak to the, the, the specific person I'm looking for. And when you're talking to that specific person, you can say, she's, this is what her character's like. This is what her integrity's like. This is her sense of humor. So mm -hmm. get ready. Yes. I, I, I call it setting the stage, each setting the stage for somebody. Yeah. Some work. It's, it's like somebody introducing you on stage and they're going to build you up to, to, to sing the national anthem. And we're going to wow everybody. All right. How to make a solid connection. Okay, so a solid connection is, for some people, look, some people are just looking for a lead. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a lead. Mm -hmm. I, I can go buy leads if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a lead. So a solid connection for me is, a, is an actual introduction. And an introduction is very different than a lead. Mm -hmm. I don't want a name and a phone number. I don't want an email address. I want you to send the email 
if you have to, if that's their best way of communicating, then you send the email introducing me with that person. If their best way to communicate is text, you send a joint text introducing. Or if, if it's a phone call, um, make the phone call and then help make that introduction. My personal thing is I want you to take me by the hand and walk me in the door. Yeah. You know, if, if that's ideal for me, I want, I want my, my friends to come in and say, hey, hey, let's have lunch together. I want to introduce you. I'm actually doing this for uh, one of my friends and clients. I, I told her, I said, I got a guy I really want you to meet, and I think this would be really great. And so I set up a lunch for the three of us mm -hmm. because I know that that's going to be the best way to solidify that relationship between her and him is if I'm there and we're all kind of talking. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to come back to that because um, I just, I'm in the process of doing that with a couple of people right now. Yeah. The value and also, yeah. you know, being a woman in business, uh -huh. that's especially important for me. Yeah. Because I really, I really, I really feel even more protected by my referral partners when they're willing to go with me to lunch. That's awesome. I'm not just being hung out with, you know, somebody else um, that I don't know. And especially if in, a, in most of my circles, you know, it's very male dominated. So I, I would much prefer, especially for my, my, my fellows that are wanting to go, hey, let's go have lunch together. Mm -hmm. that, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable about meeting somebody I don't know. In this case, I'm introducing a woman friend to a male friend. So again, another reason to put us all together was just a, another layer of just extra. Even though I, I totally trust the guy, I want her to feel comfortable. It goes Does that make along. Sense? It makes all the sense in the world. It goes a long way, and it also accelerates the process of getting to know somebody. Yeah, just because yeah. that it has such a personal touch. I mean, my right. I I just introduced my wife from a gentleman I actually met at the first go engage meeting I went to in Baton Rouge. I just introduced my wife to that gentleman, and um, and he was you know, my wife's hard to get, even yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. He's like I can't get her. I said I know I, I that might happen. Let me follow up with her. So, right, but. But we went through that back and forth, and that that's happening now. So, yeah. all right, how you'll reach out to their contact? That's along the lines of what you were just talking about. But how, yeah, it kind of goes back to you know, are they gonna? Are you gonna? Are you gonna email them? Or are you gonna call them? What are we doing? What's the best way? Yeah, right. Okay. And and how? You know, I get a dozen emails every day, so yeah. they're gonna get lost. And the, text me. The last one here is this is an interesting one. Your confidentiality confidentiality requirements yeah uh, confidentiality yeah, requirements is kind of a big one because uh especially in the um industrial world or the hr world mm -hmm. a lot of times you know we're in a referral relationship we've been knowing each other for a while we've been doing one-to-ones well there might be information that you might kind of say to me that is not necessarily for public consumption just yet construction is a is a big one you know a lot of times there'll be projects that are out there and it's like Hey, so and so is our is our friend, and, and they're working on this project, and I want to put you in front of them. But you know, this is not uh, you know something that's that we can all just have a general conversation about. We're gonna we're gonna go in and we're gonna do. Or you know what? Hey, I've got a I've got someone in procurement, but they don't need to be bombarded, and this is not something you can just share with everybody. I'm giving this referral to you. Please don't pass that information you know off to anybody. I'm I'm handing it to you because I trust you. So there's just a lot of different levels. Sometimes in banking, you can't always share information like that. You kind of just got to say, hey, I, I got a buddy who might need some help. I did this with a, a, another situation with an attorney that I knew. I was like, hey, I got a guy that might need some help. And uh, just wondering if, you know, you could, we could touch base about it, you know, not being able to get into details. But so you never what know I what someone's confidentiality requirements are. So ask. Yes. So, okay, so let's, let's say, so folks, y'all just got a sample of what Angie does and she brings it down. And, and when I go to these meetings, you can see, I've, I've been in a number of the meetings where you have given this presentation and people who are new to networking, it, it's see, it's obvious if you've been doing it, but when you have not been doing it, it's, you can see the light bulb going off around the room. Like, oh yeah, I should be doing that. Especially that, when I make them answer. <laughs> yes, you do. You you hold them. You hold people accountable, whether they want to be or not. When you call right. on them, you do a great job of that. All right. 
uh, blended strategy. That's the name of your business. Yep. Talk about the name of the business because I love branding. The story behind the brand in this situation is pretty good, really good. And then the services that you provide and how you help people. And then we're going to go to a your call to action because we are what? Shameless hussies. Huh? Yes, we're <laughs> shameless hussies. And we're, re we're resisting passivity and we're going to be a shameless hussy about what we do. Yes. So that's the um, call to action piece. So we'll say that for the for the very end. But blended strategies, talk about a little bit more of your, your services and then talk about the event that you're going to be coaching people on live. Uh, so... Um, blended strategies, like I said, I formed a company in 2020, um, after my dad kind of was like, okay, you're, you're, you're now laid off from COVID. This is the time. If there was ever a time, this is the time. And I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to call it? And my husband was actually the one who came up with a name because, because of my eclectic background, I've done so many different things. And he's like, really, you could do a lot of things. You could consult, which I do. You could, you could train, which I do. You could, you know, teach. And in a situation like this with the networking, you could mm -hmm. do outsource of this and outsource of that, which I do. And uh, he was like, and we're a blended family. We have seven children between wow. us. Um, ages 25 to 17 at the moment. And uh, now we have our first grandbaby on the way, yes. which we're excited about. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, so we have a blended family. Uh, we have six girls and one boy. So, and they're all different, all different kinds of personalities. So blended personalities. And then, um, when I really kind of found the niche of, of interpersonal communications years ago, I, I was a sailor coach and I, uh, taught disc a lot. Um, disc is the, um, it's less about personality mm -hmm. and more about communication style. It's how you send and receive information. It talks about your energy levels. It talks about whether you're people oriented or task oriented. Um, and just kind of helps people to understand, okay, man has been trying to understand himself for eons. I mean, there's been, you know, the Zodiac was a whole one thing. There was at one point they were defining personalities by bodily fluids. But I don't know if anybody else remembers that, but I do. Sanguine and phlegmatic and melancholic. Um, there's been earth, fire, water, air. You know, there's been all different kinds of ways that people have tried to 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 do that. There have been personalities. There's a lot. I've taken the Enneagram test. I've done Myers-Briggs. I've done all the things. You know, everybody does these things to try to understand why do I do what I do. Mm -hmm. And for me, in a in a professional situation, I saw a disc and it's life-changing power when I was teaching it as a Sandler coach. Yeah. I saw that it surpassed just the workplace mm -hmm. and it actually went from work into home because mm -hmm. people would go, oh my gosh, that's my coworker. That's my boss. That's my spouse. That's mm -hmm. my yeah. And it started to change conversations that were happening training-wise in the workplace that then moved into the home place. Mm -hmm. And there's no such thing as work-life balance. Let's get real. It doesn't exist. So anything that we can do to learn how to be better communicators at work and at home, especially, you know, and with us, seven, you mm -hmm. know, all, yeah. and we've got them all at Christmas too. Like we've got all the kids and all the in-laws, my side of the family, Joe's side of the family, and everybody's like piled up in there. And, you know, it's, um, uh, there's a lot going on. And so, and everybody's kind of got that, you know, thing. And then when I, when I started doing this, I realized, you know, I love disc and I love what's going on, but I also love Simon Sinek's why. Yeah. I love Brene Brown's discussions around vulnerability and courage. Um, I love Chris Voss, the FBI negotiator. Yeah. He's got so many great things, you know, have you given up on this? You know, would it be ridiculous for me to, I used that on somebody yeah. recently. Would it be ridiculous for me to ask you about this? Yeah. Um, would you be so, opposed to it? And, and there's a little, yeah, there's a little bit of, of deal carding to you. So I just felt like, okay, there's nothing new under the sun and there's always more than one way to skin a cat. And so for me, I, just blended everything into all these different, you know, situations. So I use a little bit of Simon Sinek and a little bit of David Sandler, a little bit of Dale Carnegie, a little bit of Chris Voss. And I, you know, hand out, here's the materials, go, go read, you know, these things. I'm just the messenger. Right. Um, 
That's and it. And you're coaching them through that process, learning how to yes, do it. And, yes. And I have uh, several businesses that will come to me and say, okay, I've got forward facing employees that do not know how to uh, get out there. Like they just don't get it. And again, this thing yep. has become, and it, they'd rather be like this. It's a, it's a crutch. Or, or sending an email because the face to face is difficult. Um, or I've got the opposite happening where there's a lot going on at work and the, the people behind the scenes are maybe stepping on each other and they're getting easily offended and easily upset with one another when really, if they knew why they themselves acted the way they acted and then, yeah. then, then you can recognize that in someone else. And if you're a storyteller like me. Yep. And you're talking to somebody who needs facts and figures. Well, the goal, the, the phrase that Zig Ziglar coined is the platinum rule. Mm -hmm. The golden rule says, okay, we're all, you know, treat others as the way you would want to be treated. And that kind of puts us all in the same boat. So what I would like and how I would like to be communicated with is what you would like. Mm -hmm. Well, not to say that scripture is incorrect because it's not, but the next step then that Zig Ziglar talked about was the platinum rule. And that is you need to, you need to treat others and communicate with others in ways that are meaningful to them. Yes. If you're going to really make a connection and your, your goal is to serve others, especially when we talk about referral networks and, and networking, well, then you have to learn how you communicate so that you can better communicate with other people in a way that's meaningful to them. And that can't be done if you don't understand how you do what you do and why, and then be able to recognize that person's different than me. It's not that they're mad at me or offended with me. It's just they, they just send and receive information differently. So there's a lot that goes into that. And again, that comes into play with spouses and kids and siblings and aging parents and all of it. Well, across the board, you got the day-to-day -day practice at home yeah. with, with, with an army of people. And of course, the practice extends to work. Uh, we, we get a button up there, but July 18th, you got something coming up. Talk about that real quick. Cause yeah, July 18th at uh, Restoration One, um, my buddy Chris Tepfer, who is also kind of founded Go Engage, um, really he founded it and yep. I just kind of jumped in with him. Um, and he and I kind of work really well together as foils. <laughs> you know, he's got a very dry sense of humor and then, then there's me. Yeah. So, uh, we teamed up together because we saw inside go engage and, uh, this inability for some people to be able to actually concisely and easily say what it is that they do in an elevator pitch. So we have an elevator pitch class that we're going to be teaching. That is July 18th. I'm going July to make 18th. it to that. I want to hear that. I'm going to tell you why. I'm used to speaking in front of a large audience, small, big, TV, not TV, you name it. I'm very comfortable with that. I came into the, the, this side of the world running from running trade associations. When you run trade associations, the world comes to you. Right. When you get become a consultant or go out on your own, now you're going, and if you own a business or a franchise like Restoration One, you're going out to the world. Yep. So to consolidate everything you would normally say in 10 minutes or 20 minutes, my head explodes when, when I'm given one minute. I stumble over myself. I'm very comfortable doing this. We can talk for another 30 minutes and we right. can keep going and going and going. But give me one minute, that's tough. That's what you're going to coach people on how to do on July 18th. Right. at Restoration One, and where can they find that information? This is the call to action for your website and where they can find this information to come to the training. Yep, blendedstrategiesllc.com, and you'll see the Eventbrite link for the, the, the elevator pitch class on July 18th at Restoration One of East Baton Rouge. I think they're on Cloverland in, okay. uh, in well, we, Industrial Plex. Well, we will have the link to your website in the show notes. We will have the link for any other information. Well, we're going to send them to your website. They're going to go to your website to get further information because in, and to get in touch with you, blendedstrategiesllc.com. That's correct. Right. Okay. We will have that domain inside the show notes as well, folks. Angie, uh, 
one parting word of advice to someone, you, you made the transition, not an easy transition, going out on your yeah. own. Uh, what's that piece of guidance? I want people to realize their potential. What's that piece of guidance so they can see the possibilities? Wow. Um, I think the biggest thing is you have to tap into your passion. Um, because if you're not passionate about what you do, you won't, you won't get out and push. Yeah. And that goes back to finding your why, uh, setting your boundaries, figuring out what your core values are. It took me a hot minute to figure out what those core values were. I thought I had them and then realized I didn't. Um, and when I started to put those, those pieces together, my why became not, I have to put food on the table or I got to feed all these kids or I've got weddings and grandbabies and graduations in college. Everybody has. So your why has to be different. Um, mine is next to construction, people are the one building that will outlast the builder. Wow. So if my Angelou is correct and people will forget what you did, mm -hmm. but they'll never forget how you made them It'll feel, feel. Yep. then have that level of impact, whatever it is. And for me, that's helping people understand how to better communicate, period. If you and don't have that why, you're not going to push. That's, well, that, that is where we end. This is perfect. Angie, I want to thank you for being on the Close the Deal show. Uh, folks, I'll be, again, I'm going to have all that information in the show notes. Angie, this has been a great journey with you. Appreciate it. And appreciate your passion because it's screams. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. All right. Thank you. And that is a wrap with Angie. I absolutely adore her. I love the energy that she brings. Um, folk networking is everything. And what we talked about toward the end about networking, uh, is so true. Uh, it's a, it's a skill. It's a practice skill. It's a perishable skill. If you're not out there on the playing field, it it's face to face, it's body to body con it's a contact sport networking. That's a great way to put it. Networking is a contact sport and you got to get in the game to have success with it. And it starts building those relationships, starts building those referrals. And you have to be a shameless hussy. We, I'll explain that a little bit further. The shameless hussy is meaning you're not, you're there for one thing, and that's to build relationships, connect with folks, build those relationships, and ask for a referral, and then get, meet that referral, and hopefully ask for business. Being a shameless Hushy, 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 see. I'm going to leave that in. I was going to edit that out. We're going to go with that, folks. All right. I want you to do me a, a couple of favors. One, like, share, all those things. Uh, want to get the word out. If you're on Spotify or Apple, please leave five stars. And you know the drill. Be intentional and make today a great day. All right. Take care. Bye.